Well, welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is uh, Pastor Jeremy Heidkamp, and I'm very happy to be with you today as we continue to work through uh, this book by Jerry Bridges called The Discipline of Grace. And today we are in chapter 12 of this book, The Discipline of Watching. Uh, this is a very interesting chapter, I think, as we've talked about these various disciplines that um, relate to the matter of grace, the things that we're called um, by Scripture to do, to think, to be, um, to believe, to trust, um, as it relates to God's offer and blessing of grace towards us. And today we have this discipline of watching that we're talking about. Um, of course, uh, Bridges brings to mind Matthew chapter 26, and in particular verse, verse 41, um, as sort of a, um, a scriptural theme for this chapter. Um, I'll read that for you now, Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Um, sometimes when I'm reading uh, a verse of scripture, especially in this instance where it's just one kind of single verse, um, I like to break it down and do a little bit of like sentence diagramming with this, um, with the verse. Um, sometimes I go so far as to make sure that I understand what the subject is, what the predicate of, this, of the uh, um, sentences. So who is doing the action and what kind of action are they doing or is being done towards them. Um, sometimes I just uh, underline and circle different words that uh, refer to other words. So sometimes those, when we talk about English grammar, sometimes that's maybe a direct object or an adjective or something. Um, you don't have to go that far, but I think even just looking at this very simple passage and and, and underlining and circling the things that sort of jump out to you is critically important. And, and for myself, um, when I do this, I understand that, you know, the first command that's here is to watch and pray. There is a second command here, which is to not fall into temptation. In between that, we have sort of a, a clarifying statement. So we have the command, watch and pray, and the command, not fall into temptation, and in between, we have this, this clarifying statement that says, in order that you will not. So watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Um, that might seem very straightforward and simple to you, but what is maybe the key word in that passage? Well, I've circled the word you as the key word in that passage. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. You know, I think sometimes we think about this in terms of other people. I'm going to pray for that person. It looks like they're going down a bad road. I'm going to pray for, you know, that situation or that relationship or whatever it might be. Um, I'm going to pray for myself. I'm going to ask other people to pray for me so that I don't fall into temptation. That's a little bit of a different um, perspective. I like in the book how uh, Bridges has utilize the, the illustration of the Titanic um, in relationship to this. Of course, the very simple reality of the Titanic is if the people who were charged with its, um, with its safety had kept watch a little better, uh, very likely they would not be in the situation. Uh, they would not have been in the situation that they were in. They would not have um, uh, come across uh, and, and struck an iceberg and they would not have sunk. Now, of course, that's looking back in, in hindsight. Can we prove that to be the case? No. But what we can prove is that the watchman, the, the, the captain, they were a bit um, lackadaisical in their command, their call to watch over this ship. We sometimes get that way in our own lives. We um, become lackadaisical about watching out over our own selves, our own hearts, our own minds, our own thoughts, our own actions. Um, and so I think that um, Bridges has laid this out beautifully. He has four key um, statements for us to consider this morning. The first is this, you have got to know your enemy. The second is you've got to know yourself. The third is you have got to know your weaknesses. And then the fourth is you've also got to know your strengths. 
So let's talk about each of those real quickly. Know your enemy. Um, if you were in worship with us yesterday uh, at Cornerstone Faith Community Church on, on Sunday, September 28th, I believe was the date, uh, 27th, Sunday, September 27th, um, we just talked about this. We, we, that was the, the, the heart of our message yesterday. As we talked about God's unfailing love and how it preserves our lives, we recognized that we couldn't talk about the preservation of our lives. We couldn't talk about God loving us so much if we hadn't first fully considered and understood and talked about the matter of our sin, the matter of that thing that separates us from, love, from God's love. Um, and we couldn't talk about God's promise to preserve our lives forever and forever with him if we didn't talk about the opposite of that, which of course is hell. The reality that those who reject Christ, those who turn away from God purposefully, those who will not submit themselves to him, um, they're destined for um, what the book of Revelation calls the lake of fire, an ever burning yet never consuming fire and so we had this great discussion if you didn't get to join us for worship i encourage you to go to our youtube channel um, or to our facebook page and check out the video from sunday september 27th a um, lot more information on that there but we have to know our enemy um, satan of course is the enemy and bridges rightly calls him the ruler of this world prince of the air scripture calls him uh, the one who is orchestrating evil against us um, I loved how Bridges broke it down, though. He said there are sort of three key enemies. The first, of course, is Satan. And the other two relate to him, but the first is Satan. The second is the society we live in. It's an enemy to us. We would love to think that everybody that we live with cares about us, wants to see us succeed and do well. The reality is most of the people that we live and do life together with do not have the same um, compassion for our life, do not have the same uh, anticipation for our life, they don't care. And, and if they draw us away into sin, they draw us away into sin, they probably wouldn't view it as drawing us away into sin. So we have Satan as enemy number one, the world society as enemy number two, and then we have um, ourselves, which is a really hard one to talk about because we don't, we don't ever want to recognize the reality of this statement. We are our own worst enemies. We allow ourselves to be drawn away by sin. Now, we do have that natural tendency towards sin. We sin by both nature and choice, but we allow ourselves to be drawn away by sin. We have got to make a conscious effort to, to not allow sin to have that impact on our lives. So know your enemy. Know that Satan is an enemy, the world is an enemy, and you are often your own enemy. Know yourself then. Of course, that makes sense. If we have to know ourselves as the enemy, we've got to know ourselves. Um, we've got to know, Bridges says, our tendencies. So he, he uses this story uh, or this illustration in his life about ice cream. Um, and a car, right? He, he talks about ice cream and how he says it is the one thing that, you know, it just, if he's not careful, it lures him away all the time, all the time, over and over and over again. Or, or he was talking about how he found, he saw someone who had the same car he did, it just happened to be a, a, the, the next model up and have a lot more features and things. And, and, and suddenly he found himself sort of fixated on wanting to get that car. Um, knowing yourself and knowing your tendencies means we gotta, we got to know, when am I prone to focusing on things that are not good for me? When am I prone to, to, to sort of laser focus on something that it, it, it does not have my best interest in, at heart? Um, we have to know, of course, that sin is a natural part of who we are. Um, that it is something we will struggle with every single day. And just because we can continue to struggle it, uh, struggle with it doesn't mean that we can't, in, in some sense, overcome it for that moment. Um, we, we certainly don't have in our own bodies the power to overcome the draw, the temptation of sin. But God can help us to overcome it in that moment and in the next moment and in the next time that it comes up. And so we've got to know ourselves. We've got to know something about ourselves. What are we most prone to? He also talks about how we need to know 
our weaknesses. Again, what are you prone to? What are the things that kind of take your knee, take you out of the knee, um, leave you powerless? Um, what things, and, and I'm going to say this a particular way, and then I'm going to come back and, and, and clarify it. What things might, might cause you to sin? Notice I didn't say what things do cause you to sin. I mean, we do need to recognize those things. We need to know those things. But sometimes we, we gloss over, we forget to think about the things that might possibly cause you to sin. And so uh, Bridges uses this example of him being in a hotel room by himself and turning on the TV and ended up watching something inappropriate. And he recognized in that moment that he, he couldn't trust himself to turn on a TV in a hotel room by himself and not watch something that is inappropriate. Um, I want to talk about television for just a second. It's such a great example of all of these things, knowing the enemy, knowing ourselves, knowing our weaknesses. Um, listen, with television comes this reality. Um, I'm sorry, this presentation of reality, not a reality, presentation of reality towards us that we often have uh, a problem sort of segmenting and saying, okay, uh, this part is good and beneficial and right for me, and this part is not good and not beneficial and not right for me. We have we have we have blurred the line. So so things Bridges says things that have once been considered unthinkable are now completely thinkable. In fact, possible. In fact, always happening on TV. And I and I got to thinking about that. Like you think back to the to the I Love Lucy show. Um, one of the things I know about that show is that it was it was very very controversial um, in in the fact that it was the, one of the first shows to try to air uh, an episode where um, a husband and a wife are shown um, sleeping in the same bedroom together, uh, a bedroom scene, if you will. Now, in that particular show, the way that they got around it was that they had them sleeping in twin beds, which was not uncommon for that era, but um, they had them sleeping in twin beds, and they very rarely showed them both in the room at the same time, those kinds of things. And there were other instances where Isla Lucy kind of pushed the envelope, but so that's in the 50s, the, you know, um, in the 50s. Now, today, I mean, wow. We see so much more than that, so much more graphic content than that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always concerned when, I, when Sarah and I are watching TV, you know, we, we are not watching things that would be unacceptable necessarily, but there may be things that even just in the commercials could come on TV and they wouldn't be appropriate for my son to see, for example. So we've got to know the weaknesses. What are things are we prone to? What are the things that might possibly cause us to sin? Um, because if it might possibly, then we've got to be really, really careful around it. So then Bridges kind of brings it up to our strengths. You've got to know your strengths. So knowing our strengths is one thing. It is very good for us. We can know that, okay, I, I actually excel in that particular situation. There's no, there's really no sin temptation for me in that situation. I excel over here. There's really no, no sin temptation there. But to get a big head about that, to become overconfident about that, to um, become then lackadaisical in our watching when it comes to those things is ultimately going to cause us to fall. Um, again, I said yesterday in our message, you know, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Why? Because pride is always a problem. It always, 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 always ends up in this situation. That an otherwise wonderful, trustworthy, faithful person becomes a fallen statistic. Pride gets in the way. And it makes us fall. The book of Proverbs said, pride goeth before the fall. Um, and, and it causes us to fall. So we have to be careful. We've got to be able to know our strengths, but we've got to be able to keep them in check. And remember that just because it's a strength doesn't mean I have to stop watching over it. I would think probably when we get back to the Titanic, for example, that um, Captain may have said, hey, listen, we've prepared for icebergs. We knew that this was a part of the process. We've sailed through here before. We know what we're doing. And, and that's fine. That's a good thing. I'd want to get on that boat. That guy knows what he's doing. But I only want to get on that boat if he's also saying, but we're going to remain vigilant watching for those things because even though we're really good at it and we know what we're doing, something could come our way that catches us off guard. That's the situation for us with sin. 
yeah, let's be good. Let's be, let's, let's rejoice in our strengths. Let's be good at, 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 at battling against sin. But let's never get so overconfident that we stop watching. Matthew said, we, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, we got to watch and pray. Otherwise, we are prone to fall. I hope you guys have a great week this week. I look forward to meeting together with you next week as we take a look at uh, chapter 13 of this book. And uh, until then, uh, be blessed. I hope you have a great week and a great day.